Taylor again. If you love movies or live sport, and with the Tokyo Olympics coming up, you might be wondering about getting a soundbar. But can a cheap soundbar get you that immersive cinema sound with deep bass rumble, explosive impact, and atmospheric crowd noises that beats regular TV sound? Do you need to be a home improvement DIY wizard with a spare weekend to install it, or a tech geek to actually make it work? And at the end of the day, when you make your living room look like a branch of your local Best Buy electronics store with all the clutter meaning, you end up getting rid of it to restore domestic harmony. Well, you've found the right video. We'll get into all this with three compact and convenient HDMI ARC 2.1 sandbars that won't break the bank. The £80 Majority K2, £80 Creative Stage V2 and £105 Bowmaker Ultra Slim 190 Watt. I've unboxed, assembled and lived with these three sandbars for a few days and recorded them on a Zoom H front Pro microphone. Jotting down some categories to guide us through, I rate them in each, starting with the most important category, sound quality. We'll take a listen to cinema sound and music demos from these three highly rated soundbars against my Sony XH95 TV's highly rated internal speakers and my living room hi-fi. So sit back, relax and watch through to the end to make sure you don't miss any deal breakers, see which if any is worth your hard earned cash and how I decide on my overall winner. Welcome to GI Chow. So starting with the sound, all these are 2.1 arc soundbars which means as well as regular stereo left and right channels they have a separate subwoofer for a more authentic deep bass. All have a deeper bass than my stereo which while not quite as tight and a bit more boomy is still great for movies. K2 can distort with very deep bass, more of which later, and while the bone maker has the wider stereo separation, its treble detail can unduly emphasise breathy sounds and make male voices sound slightly thin, though this can be remedied by switching to movie mode, which adds back some body. With music particularly, you notice the extra richness of realism on the soundbars and how tinny TV speakers sound in comparison. <laughs> Two three equalization modes, ADJ for a balanced sound, moving which kills mids, and dialogue which boosts low and mids and reduces treble. ADJ is the clearest but can sound a touch tinny and similar to the treble. Now you can adjust the level of bass and treble, though changing modes resets any adjustments, and the only way to see the level you're on is to change it. The creative surround and Bonemaker 3D modes definitely also make a subtle difference, and that sound seemed to come less obviously from the soundbar. Overall, I've given this round to the creative, which presents a very dynamic, deep and explosive bass with real rumble that can convey menace, crowd noise and atmosphere, but at the same time a natural and realistic sound that handles dialogue very convincingly. On to loudness, and the bone maker reaches 99 decibels at the lowest volume level of 46, followed by the K2 at 53 and creative at 69. However, the K2 distorts with heavy bass rhythms at lower volumes, which means its practical maximum volume may be less. 
Another thing to consider is that the KT speakers are offset to the left in the soundbar. And while the soundbar itself is longer than the Creative, the left-right separation is actually less at 56cm at the widest point rather than 60cm at the Creative and 70cm on the Bowmaker. So overall, I've given this round to the Bowmaker. Moving on to looks, none of the really lookers, so the Creative has an understated quality about it and the most attractive brand logo, though the soundbar itself is both high and deep. I wish the LED mode light went off to avoid it distracting from the TV screen at night, though the modes are at least easily readable. Looking at the soundbar from above, I'd have preferred to see a smooth surface rather than the plastic cradle which stands proud. The Creative Remote Control looks the most premium have with a brush finish on the remote which is easy to use though has a bulge. The Bonemaker branding is a bit more garish and cheap looking and has the widest soundbar that's also deep. The K2 is fairly plain looking with no branding on the soundbar which is the lowest profile in the group. While the sub is more noticeable, it's the only wireless sub here, so it can be hidden out of sight to surprise your visitors who will wonder where the sound is coming from. It really is surprisingly big sounding. The Creative at 6 kilos is the most solidly constructed, followed by the Bone Maker at 4.9 kilos and K2 at 3.3 kilos. So while the Creative would take the win for build quality, I've given this round now lead to K2 for its inconspicuous looks and high level subs. GI Chow is a world top 10,000 Amazon Vine reviewer building a community searching out high quality at the lowest price. If you're getting value, subscribe or leave a comment below to be a part of it and help us grow. Thanks. Considering ease of use, all have HDMI ARC input for convenient connection to your TV and operation of on, off and volume from your existing TV remote. They also support optical and regular headphone outputs. All have nice inconspicuous remote controls and the Creative looks the most premium followed by the Bone Maker and then the K2, though with HDMI ARC, one shouldn't need them very often. The Creative shows the mode most clearly on the display, whereas the Bone Maker shows the code and the K2 a simple light, so the Creative wins this round for its clear mode indication. Moving on to features, as well as HDMI, all have Bluetooth, optical and regular aux, and the Creative has USB for use as an audio device for the computer, while the K2 has a built-in FM radio. All have various sound modes including dialogue and movie plus bass adjustment. The Creative and Bone Maker also have surround or 3D effects to enhance the sound stage and sense of sounds coming from beyond the physical speakers. So overall, I'll call this round a jaw. As far as ease of setup goes, all are straightforward so long as the soundbar dimensions don't obstruct your TV screen, your TV table has space for their depth and width, and you have a spare power socket. All fitted on my 70cm wide AV table perfectly with their weight resting reassuringly on rubber pads, though I had to move my TV pedestal stand back a bit. They can also be wall mounted. With a non-wireless sub with a creative and bow maker, you can't move them completely out of the way, though I positioned mine just behind my existing hi-fi speakers without compromising the base. The K2 includes all the cables and remote batteries, so you're ready to go out of the box, whereas you'll need your own HDMI cable with the others. Once all positioned and plugged in, you just need to switch your TV sound to PCM mode for HDMI ARC to work. Then it's just a question of tweaking the bass and treble settings to your preferred level and you're done. So while all are easy to set up, this round goes to the K2 for being the easiest to accommodate and coming with everything you need to get going. Price-wise, the Bone Maker is the most expensive at £105, so simply the Creative and K2 at £80 take this round. So to wrap up, I have the Sony XH95 TV, which has good sound for a modern panel TV, but it sounds positively tinny after hearing any of these soundbars, which sound better by quite some margin, and for me the difference is enough to be worth the hassle of extra visual clutter, plugs and wires. The K2's wireless sub is the least obtrusive so it won't upset domestic harmony. It can bottom out and pop with bass heavy music but the sound in the main is very good. It's cheap and easy to set up and a tree planted for every unit sold is a welcome bonus. The Bone Maker goes loudest and has the widest speaker separation while maintaining a fairly low profile though it is physically wider and deeper than others and the most expensive here. The Creative sounds the most realistic, with impressive low frequency impact, it's cheap and easy to use, though it may be too large to fit in front of your TV and the LED can be distracting. With my focus being top sound quality at the lowest price, it's my overall winner. They all sound good and best of basic hi-fi system with a deeper bass, better sound localization from action on a TV screen and convenience of everything being controlled from your normal TV remote. The question for you is how often do you want full range immersive sound from your TV? If all the time, a 2.1 arc soundbar like these could be just a ticket. If just the movies, plugging in a decent stereo as needed is a great option. I'll post a separate video with full sound recordings, but for now, thanks for watching and to my subscribers. Get involved in the comments, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye!